Hello, welcome to this edition of the Telescope Makers Workshop. My name is Francis O'Reilly, and I'll be your host as we discuss making a mating concave surface to a convex surface of a smaller optic. My goal is going to be to make the surfaces so that they match exactly in radius. We'll be testing ultimately by interferometry. And this, as I've said, is for a stevic Paul telescope, where the secondary and ter uh, tertiary surfaces, optics of a four optic system, are supposed to be of equal curves. The secondary is a smaller optic convex, the tertiary is a larger optic concave. I've worked on the telescope mirror for some time now. As you'll recall, I purchased a pre-ground blank, 8 inch pre-ground blank, to a radius of 120 inches. Ground to 30 micron grit, I ground with 320 to get the tooling marks out, and then I moved on to 500. It took me about 20 minutes to get at 320 to get the tooling marks out. At 500, I brought the radius, or the sagitta rather, down to the exact sagitta that I need to match the curve that I'm trying to match to within a micron, a micron being 1 1,000th of a millimeter or 1 millionth of a meter, a very close tolerance. I then moved on to number 12 aluminum, uh, 12 micron aluminum oxide and I'm just about a uh, micron shallow based on the spherometer readings that I'm using. That's fine because I'm going to be moving on next to five micron. Let's just get an idea of what we mean when we talk about a micron, one millionth of a meter, one thousandth of a millimeter. You often hear of wave ratings. Now what are wave ratings? That's a wave of light. Of course we all know that waves of light vary in wavelength depending upon the color of the light and generally we're talking about visible light with red on the longer end of the spectrum thereby a lower uh, a, a, a smaller number and uh, blue on the high end so we're looking somewhere between let's say 460 nanometers and uh, 780 nanometers is the visible spectrum of light. I could be off a little bit, but that's that's roughly what we're looking at. I generally like to talk in the 589 nanometer range, that being approximately the uh, wavelength of sodium light, which our eyes are fairly well attuned to because, after all, sunlight from the Earth, after filtering through the atmosphere, sort of looks yellow and we're sort of accustomed to yellow light, and that's where the human eye is most sensitive. So when I'm talking about a wave of light, I'm talking about the sodium doubling. Now a micron is about just a hair under two wavelengths of uh, sodium light. So if I can get my sagittas to match to within a micron, I know that I'm within about two wavelengths of light on a sagitta point of view, matching the curves four fringes if you want to go uh, if you want to go there. But before I do that, and a number of people have commented, uh, I've got to feed the cat. So you'll bear with me while I give her her friskies. She's floating around here. Just put the cat food in the bowl. And here she comes. She hears, she knows what's going on. She's not dumb. I don't think she's going to jump up here. But uh, the cat food is now in the bowl. I'll put the garbage aside and throw it out when I'm done with the video. Here comes the cat. She is a telescope making cat. They call her the floof. Whoops. She got caught on a on a rag. They call her the floof. Uh, they call her fluffy. She's a fine cat and she's scared. I'm going to put the cat food bowl down because she's a little camera shy. <clears throat> In doing my fine grinding, uh, I progressed pretty well, but I noticed the bevel on the edge of my blank was uh, starting to wear out. Now, a bevel's pretty important. It gives you a break in the surface 
uh, between the uh, optical surface and the edge of the glass. With a bevel, you don't really run the risk of chipping the glass. However, if you have the surface all the way out to the very uh, edge of the glass, and you're grinding and polishing, you could get a clamshell, you could get a piece to chip off. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-bevel the glass before I go into 5 micron. And I treat that as a separate grinding operation. It's important to keep that in mind because I'm really using a whetstone, and the whetstone is fairly coarse. It's probably as coarse as rough grinding. And you really want to be very careful and be very clean when you're doing that because if you start to get some of the whetstone mixed in with your fine grinding, what are you going to end up with? A scratch, and you're going to have to go back to some form of rough grinding because you're never going to polish out those pits. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my work surface, my Parker barrel. I'm going to take the uh, New York Post. And by the way, just uh, I normally say this, today is uh, February 12, 2013. It's the date uh, President Obama is giving his State of the Union uh, speech. However, I'm more concerned about the state of my optics than uh, his State of the Union today. So I'm going to be working on, uh, working on this optic and working on this video. It has more impact on my life. And you're hearing this from a lawyer, as you know. I'm spreading the New York Post out. Now, just before you get any ideas, New York Post is the paper I, I read every morning and I just keep them with me. And you know, if you go and you go out for a bagel or for breakfast, and you get the newspaper and you sit down and you read it, or you get the newspaper delivered deliver it home, you might as well, instead of throwing it out, save it and use it for uh, telescope making. It's, it's a good thing to do. Uh, the New York Post is owned by Rupert Murdoch, who also owns Fox News. I'm a conservative, but I'm not. I'm not. Um, so please don't hold that against me. I've now laid out the paper on the, on the table, on my Parker barrel. I'm going to take my optic and place it on the table. Take my whetstone, and I'm going to get my whetstone wet. Work on the rough side. Now, a whetstone has two sides. It's got a rough side and it's got a fine side. I'm going to be working on the rough side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whetstone and I'm going to just go at a 45 degree angle down on the edge, being very careful. And I'm just going to slowly work my way around the optic for a period of time to knock down the sharp edge and to put a bit of a bevel on. Now you're never going to get to the same level of bevel that you had that was machined into the optic when you first got it. It's amazing how much glass you really do take off when you're grinding and that's why you lose your bevel. So I'm just going around, I'm going around in a circle and I'm going to spend probably 10 minutes doing this just to knock off the edge. While we're doing this, let's get a little bit more perspective on size and the, and, and the numbers we're dealing with. When you're talking about a nanometer, you're talking about a fairly, fairly uh, small number. A nanometer is about a uh, billionth, well it is a billionth of a meter, a millionth of a millimeter and uh, a thousandth of a micron. There are 589 nanometers in a wave of sodium light, 589.3 and 589.9, depending upon the, uh, which of the two sodium doubles you're dealing with. There's another term that we use, angstrom. Angstrom is a tenth of a nanometer. Now, for some reference, a molecule of nitrogen is one and a half angstroms in diameter. So if we're measuring to the micron level, a thousand nanometers, and a molecule of nitrogen is one and a half angstroms or 0.15 nanometers, 
Now what we're talking about when we're talking about a micron is about the diameter of 6,600 molecules of nitrogen. And when you think about it, that's some real interesting perspective. Now, if you're talking about a mirror that's made to a tenth of a wave, for argument's sake, and again, we'll say a tenth of a wave of sodium, you're talking about a mirror that is accurate to 50 nanometers. Pyrex glass can be polished to be accurate or polished to 10 nanometers. Okay, but let's get back to our tenth of a wave mirror, say 58 nanometers, 589 angstroms, and 15 angstroms is the diameter of a molecule of nitrogen. That's a pretty interesting perspective. Now, as, just as an aside, as I'm going around here, I can feel the grid. I've got my hand on top of the optic, and I can feel the grid from the whetstone on the face of the optic. Am I concerned about scratching it? Not terribly, because if I could, if my hand pressure could scratch the face of an optic, uh, that would be a very, uh, You know, why would we need a tool? We could do it, we could scratch an optic with our hand and some grit. No, we, you know, our hands really, we're really not gonna, I'm not really not gonna scratch the optic doing this. But I do wanna make sure that I keep the whetstone at a 45 degree angle. Well, that's it for now. I just wanted to show you what I do and how I bevel my edge. And what I'm anticipating is probably tomorrow I'm going to grind the mirror with 5 micron and then shortly thereafter, later this week, I'll probably make a pitch lab. Now I'm hoping to take this all out to New Mexico next week and join the, um, the uh, Albuquerque Astronomical Society uh, for a mirror making session and uh, show them what I know and find out what they know and share some information. Very nice group of people in Albuquerque. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a pleasant, uh, pleasant day and uh, I hope that my uh, video was, uh, was helpful to you.